Okay, so uh, we're here trying to find out exactly how this tests were done and what Mac built to actually get it sorted. So this is the little board, we'll nickname it Sparky, shall we? Um, made up of what? Tell me, Mac, what's, what, what is, okay, what's on so it? Okay, that's, so that's the little integrated circuit, which is current controller. Right. And it's responsible for keeping the same current during the test. So um, the current is controlled by little resistors here mm -hmm. and uh, and the circuit and all power is uh, is converted into heat into these two resistors high power resistors and also heat which goes out through that resistor. through the heat the heat sink at heat the top sink, there yeah. okay great and so then basically all you do is you attach the uh, multimeters to it yeah and the back and, and I've got two, the two multimeters in. here one right. to control the current Right. It's not connected to the to, to the PC. Another one is is connected to the PC through USB link. Yep. Yeah. Right. And this one is uh, checking the voltage. We don't Good. need we don't need to check the current. You don't need to really because we've yeah. got this. Okay. This circuit responsible for keeping the current on, in the same level. Brilliant. Brilliant. Okay. Right. So then just let's just um, plug and it all to up. The, to this oh, board, sorry. To this board, I've got I've got three connections. One is for triple A batteries. Right. Uh, two two A batteries and also USB, where I could can also test uh, USB uh, power source. For example, uh, uh, this one here, right. right, or one 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 like this. Okay, yeah. So these are the right. external the external um, batteries for smartphones and stuff yes, like that. Yes. Okay, brilliant. So Emerg this is future emergency. Yeah, emergency. Right. These are future projects. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Connect it all up and let's have a look. Alright, so this is for current meter. Now you say the, the parts for this is not very expensive at all to build this and we'll we'll no, supply the all. we'll supply the schematics if anybody wants to build their own, but that's not too expensive, huh? You're gonna need a multimeter which has a USB it's incredible cheap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to be honest. Okay, great. Great. Okay, so that's it all connected. Yes. Right, let's drop some batteries in and have a look. Right. So we're going to test uh Duracell Simply yep. batteries today. It's a brand new test this. Now the alternative to, to this very clever little board is, of course, to spend quite a lot of money on a big oh, industrial yeah, machine. <laughs> <laughs> Many thousands. Many thousands. Yeah, exactly. All right. Okay. So that little switch uh, is uh, now is switched off. Uh, just quickly, if it's working, yes, it is working. And now here on the PC, we've got link. Okay, that's linked up to the multimeter yes. through the USB port. Right. And this is set up to dump a reading every minute, yes, I believe. Yes, exactly, every 60 seconds. Right. So I can start my test. Okay. Right now, and now what we can see is the voltage on the batteries, right. which is yep. dropping down from 6 volts initially for 4 cells. Right. The current is stable, yep. half of, uh, of amp. Yep. And we can see the same reading uh, on the reading computer. On the computer. And uh, here we go going to get first the, results. Uh, any minute now, any and second now. <laughs> yes, yes, Let's in short see. time. Who needs a laboratory? Oh, oh there it is, there it goes, first reading. So the first After reading one minute, it's gone down to 5.244 5 volts. Right. You've got time and unit, which is DC voltage. Brilliant. Right, and test continues. Excellent. And how long will this test run for? Well, I believe the Duracell could take 60 minutes. It depends, it depends really. It depends if they, the if they go over 70 minutes, that, that will be great result. But <laughs> I don't think because Duracell is okay. Let's see not, Let's see what not the best. <laughs> All right, well, we'll right. return um, in a while and uh, just see how long the batteries last. Thanks, Mike. All right. So one of the things we should mention about the uh, the experiment uh, or the tests is that it's <laughs> Mac has really spent quite a bit of time researching how to make it as as useful and real world as possible and, and accurate. So um, if you explain, you've just you've you've constructed it so that 
it's about as accurate as you can get, am I yeah. right, in, yes, in terms of the board? I wanted to know how much power in milliwatts is in, in, is in a single cell battery. Right. I used uh, LM317, uh, the current regulator. Right. Right. And uh, the all, all information that's manufactured by Texas Instruments, all information I, I downloaded from the internet and... Uh, what uh, what says about uh, accuracy is uh, is a reference voltage, which is is the voltage the difference on on the voltage between in input and output of the of the regulator. So manufacturer manufacturer says is between one twenty and one thirty volts. Right. Uh, it's typical one twenty five. So in my one, I think is around one twenty five. However, I wanted to get a. a very accurate results. So, right. as a reference um, resistors, I use four of them connected par parallelly. Right. Uh, so the uh, so you brought it down from twelve percent. Yes, twelve percent down uh, to three to three percent maximum mistake. Uh, uh, plus, obviously, w I think one percent as a temperature stability. But uh, as so we were saying, it doesn't really matter because this is a comparative yes, test, battery yes, against battery. Yes, it's just it to make sure it, it it, you get as... as uh, because I wanted to, to find out... That, that's okay. That's oh, it's all right. Okay. Because I wanted to find out how much power is, is in, exactly in a, in a single cell. Right. I wanted to get results as accurate as possible. Right, of course. And so they are... They are Oh, we're still we're still going down at a, a nice speed. So we're in, six, in sixteen minutes, right? And the current voltage is four point three six four. That's in sixteen volts. minutes. Yes. Okay. We'll be interested to see where that, that those gyro cells stack up at the end of All the right. test. And we looking, uh, we we going to continue the test until it reaches three point six, which is um, uh, for. Four batteries exactly zero point nine volt average on each battery, which is minimum uh, voltage. Uh, well, what you're what you're saying is that the cutoff voltage for an alkaline cell is yes, zero point nine. Zero point nine volt. Yeah. Okay. Right, so it's normally used as a cutoff voltage on a, an alkaline cell. Right. Okay. So yes, they're de they're basically yes. dead when you get down to uh, yes. three point six they, volts for four. When they get near zero point nine volt each cell, they they are officially as discharge, discharge completely. Cool. <laughs> All right, great. Right. Well, well, we'll come back and revisit. Okay. 38 degrees. 38 degrees. Yes. It is roughly. So it's getting it's getting quite hot, obviously. And the batteries are getting are getting warm as well. And they are 33. 33 on the batteries. Yes. The chemical reaction yeah, is happening reactions, inside. Is, is, yeah, it, it generates heat. Now, is, it, is there any, you know, will people say, oh, well, hold on, you're doing such an artificial drain because it's so fast, that, you know, that it doesn't um, reflect real-world use, you know, when you plug it into a tape recorder or whatever. It is. Does that matter in terms of this comparative test? Well, if, if, if we're talking about comparison test, it does, doesn't, absolutely doesn't matter because we... We're basically looking to give exactly the same um, environment for each uh, battery. All right, cool, cool. That's okay, so we've uh, finished the testing. It's taking taken around a couple of days. If you want to see exactly what we've got here, there's the box of all the batteries we've been through. It's a fair amount of cases and all the marketing blurb. And so let's take a look at the results. Now, these results here, Mac, represent the total capacity, am I right, of, of, of the batteries that have been yeah, tested? Yeah, and it's, it's a power. So that's the power. And what have we got the results? Um, are this is in, in the milliwatts uh, uh, hour. Right. Right, and uh, our winner is Panasonic Pro Power. So the Panasonic Pro Power has the maximum amount of power of uh, milliwatt hour um, capacity out of yes. all the batteries we tested, um, which in itself is an interesting um, surprise. But we'll, we'll see, get an even greater surprise in a second when we go on to the value um, chart. Yeah. Um, what's surprising here is how low the market leader is on this chart. If we look. 
the uh, first time we even on capacity. Yeah, Duracell. Yeah, <laughs> which is Duracell actually is, uh, no, here's uh, here. I think it's Duracell. Yeah. Yes, Duracell Plus. Duracell Plus it's is the top. On the sixth place. And sixth place, which is hmm, not. Well, it's not. It's not a huge difference between two of them. Right. It's, yes. Okay. It's just uh, roughly ten percent. Okay, a ten percent right. difference between the, between the Panasonic and the and the Jusso. Okay, let's go on to the really important chart now. This is the one that really counts because if you're going to be spending your money on the batteries, you want to know which are the best value to buy. So, who, what are you getting for your buck or your pound? And what we've got is this is the mind blower for me. Um, the top of the chart is the Kodak Extra Life, All right. which, which uh, is quite considerably. Um, ahead of the lowest um, contender on the chart, which I find uh, quite astonishing that this, there's this, this range of disparity. And once again, this is pretty mind-blowing to me, is if you go down, the first time you find a Duracell is down at, where are we? Where are we? Uh, here. There you go. Tenth place. In tenth place. And if we can see the difference between tenth place and the Kodak, and this is, this is four times different. Yeah, four times the, the different. I mean, we, we've got contenders like Dio, Ikea, the Ikea and Lidl, and Maplin, the OEM, the generics, all beating the Duracells, which we have been told forever are the best batteries to buy because they're the greatest product ever known. Yeah. And even when we, I mean, you know, even when we get down to things like the, the Evolta battery, which is um, promoted as one of the greatest batteries on Amazon. It's, it, the blurb is it's one of the best batteries on the market. It's languages third from bottom in terms of value is, the, yeah. because of the price you're paying for it. Um, we'll have all the prices uh, uh, and specs in the in the actual description of the video, so you can check it all out, and of course the the full write up on the uh, on the blog post. But this is. Uh, for us, it's a massive eye opener. With was uh, we don't know whether you think it's the same, but we were expecting Duracells to be at least as a contender in the chart, and they're nowhere to be seen. And there you go. So if you're going to spend your hard-won money, you need to look at our chart first, because you could save yourself quite a lot. Thanks. Well, I hope you enjoyed this, this little expose. We'll bring more. We're going to try and do uh, lithiums, do a check of lithiums, and also the very cheap um, carbon batteries from China just to, to round it all out and of course if you're uh, at all interested feedback in the comments and uh, you know if you want to help us chime up and we'll we'll get your uh, contribution or whatever and uh, of course if you like the video like it share it and and subscribe to the channel so we can bring you more cool stuff thanks a lot